Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, I am going to be starting a new series on how I finish this particular helmet we'll take a look at in a minute that I got from Villainous Prop Shop. Again, the links to his shop will be below his Etsy shop and his website. And if you want to take a look at the other series I did using uh, doing the Red Hood helmet, you can take a look at one of these note cards that will pop up on either side here. So what this series is going to be is me walking you through all the steps to finish this helmet. And we're going to be doing some different things with this one. We're going to be, uh, this series, we're going to be doing uh, installing fans, we're going to be installing a, a voice amplification system, padding, we're going to be doing a bunch of different things. Now this helmet also differs in that it isn't going to be like a super fancy glossy looking uh, helmet like the Red Hood helmet, this is going to be sort of like a Viking look. So I'm really, really excited about that. In this particular video, the first one in the series, I'm going to be walking you through all the steps in getting this helmet super smooth. We'll take a look at it in a second and ready for paint. Now, in the last series, I got, you know, a lot of comments, which is great, and a lot of questions. I try to answer as many as possible, but I would get a lot of comments like, I do it this way, I do it that way, I use this, I use that. Most ways that people are talking about, perfectly fine, I'm practically all of them, this is how I do it. So, for example, I will sand my helmet down before I prime it. Some people will spray it with the primer, sandable primer, and then they'll sand. I just like to do it this way. I can see the layer lines. I can get in there and get it really nice and smooth. So when I go to primer, uh, it's pretty much almost done. Now, here are the pretty much the tools we're going to be using uh, to do this. Tools meaning sandpaper. I get this all the time. How did you make that helmet look like that? Oh my God. Uh, sanding. Sanding and priming. So what we'll do is we'll start off with various grits of sandpaper from like maybe like a 120 uh, all the way up to a, probably when this helmet, maybe a, a 600. So maybe even a 1200. So we do this, we might have to use some Bondo to fill in some of the um, areas in the helmet that need a little bit more help. There's also some other fillers we're gonna be taking a look at. Again, some people use wood filler. I use Bondo because somebody gave me that gigantic tub of Bondo. I'm also trying to get better with my Bondoing. So let's go ahead and uh, open this helmet up, take a look, and we will see what this helmet's gonna be, because this is a mystery we haven't looked yet, although it's probably in the thumbnail, isn't it? So you know. So let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, so great packing. Oh, this looks good. So we've got a Mandalorian-style helmet. I am really excited about this. I, believe it or not, have not done a Mandalorian helmet, and I kind of wanted to do one that was a little bit different, and that's definitely what this is. This is going to be more like a Viking-type helmet. And why? Because these horns also came with it. So these guys come over here. I don't know. I haven't looked at the instructions yet how to put this together, but they kind of go like this. So once I saw these, I thought, Viking. If you want to order one of these helmets from uh, Villainous Prop Shop, take a look at my sizing video. Again, that'll be linked here and it'll be in the description because uh, it'll show you how to size your head. So when you order it, you get the right size. Uh, I am uh, always impressed by the layer lines and the quality of his prints. This is going to be, you know, super easy to finish. When I say easy, I mean a lot of hard work sanding. Why? The Red Hood helmet was a nice smooth kind of ball compared to this. We've got all these different edges and lines we're going to have to get in. Uh, and this is going to take some time to sand. But uh, it's a nice day outside, so I'm going to actually do most of this outside. But first, let's go ahead and get a closer look behind the fake wall at these layer lines and how we're going to start this sanding so you can see what I'm talking about layer lines if you're not sure and how we knock them down. And as you can see here, if you look at a close-up of this helmet, it is really hard to actually see any layer lines in here. Now they're there, so let's go ahead and see if we can make them sort of show up a little bit better. And if I just go ahead and use some sandpaper and give it a little bit of a rub, you 
you can start to see them. Okay, so you see these little lines that are in here? These layer lines are the things we need to get rid of with sandpaper. Because if we don't, we'll see those when we put our paint on. Now again, some people will go ahead and prime this entire thing, then they will sand it. They'll use a two-in-one fillable primer, and that's what we're gonna use. Uh, and you can do that. Uh, I prefer this method. Uh, it's the way I first started doing it. It's the way I saw other people doing it, and I like it because I can see these layer lines, and I can see when they're gone. Whereas if I fill it first and then I sand, I have a harder time seeing those lines. And then I've got to keep using more primer and more primer. And that can gum stuff up like these sort of these fine lines in here if you have to keep priming, priming, priming. So we're going to go through and we're going to be sanding every single bit of this helmet to get rid of these layer lines. Now some places are a little bit more pronounced and that's just due to the printing process. You can see some uh, print lines in here that are pretty pronounced. Again, having to do with the print process, there's nothing you can do about that right here. So we'll go in there with an actually a heavier grip, maybe like an 80 at first to knock that down and then go back up. So it's really just a question of putting in the work to sand this guy down so that these lines don't show up anymore. So I'm gonna start off with this 120. And again, all, everything that I use in this video is in the links below and also on my website, 3dprintedprops.com. Now I like to use one of these little sponges. It really saves your fingers because you're gonna be doing a lot of sanding. And I unfortunately have been recently diagnosed with arthritis. Yes, I'm that old. And this project was a killer and this sponge really helped it out. So you can see here some of those lines that we were talking about. And I am just going to go ahead and give this entire helmet a once over, really sort of, you know, bearing down on it quite a bit to make sure that I'm getting those lines uh, taken care of. Now, in some helmets, unlike the Red Hood helmet that I did before and some of the other helmets I've done, you have some fine details with this one. And you can't really get in there too, too well with sandpaper. Uh, we're going to try some work with some sponges, but we'll see. And you can see here now, we still have some layer lines we got to take care of. I'm not done with the 120. I'm just going to go through and give it all everything it needs here. Now, up top, you can see that some of the artifacting from printing, we do need to switch this over because they're, they're more pronounced than the layer lines, to an 80 grit. So you can see here, I've switched to an 80 grit, which is much more aggressive, and also on the bottom of the print, which is, you know, rougher. So that 80 grit will help knock it down. Then we're going to go back to the 120, and again, this is another area where there's some detail, but we're still going to work as much as we can and sand down as much as we can with this 120, and of course, as we go through, we'll get finer and finer. Now, I love using these needle sanders, again, links below and on my website, to get into all those areas. Now we're all done. We did the entire helmet. Took probably about a half an hour, maybe a little more. And now we're going to head over to the 220. So we're moving up in grit, finer and finer, to get rid of A, the first off, the layer lines. And then as you're sanding, you're actually now getting rid of the lines from sanding the coarser sandpaper. So this 220 is taking down some layer lines that are left, but it's also taking down the lines from the 120. Okay, now we're going to move up to this finer grit, the 320 grit. And again, we're just getting finer and finer and knocking everything back. And I'm going to cut some of the stuff up so you don't see me doing every bit of the helmet. But again, unless you use all these grits and go up in strength and fineness, you're never going to get a really nice smooth helmet. But there are going to be times where it isn't going to be perfect. You're going to have a hard time getting a spot just right, and that's okay. Last is this 400, and yes, that is my son walking back there in his yellow Crocs, and there we go. We did the 400, we've got everything sanded, but it has a powder on it from all the sanding, so I'm going to go in the basement and I'm going to wash this helmet soap and water. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, take a look at the link in the video that'll pop up in one of the corners. It shows you I just wash it with regular soap and water right in my utility sink. Now, the next stage, the primer. Now this is two in one filler primer. So it isn't like just like a smooth, uh, like fine primer. This is a sandable primer. So I lay this on really thick for two coats, letting them dry about 12 to 20 hours, 24 hours each time. And 
This will fill in those lines like nobody's business. And of course, I'm also going to hit the antlers and make sure those are looking pretty cool. Don't fill them too much. Don't go too crazy because you don't want to fill in the detail. Okay, so this is looking sharp, but again, we do need to take some more sandpaper to this. This is a sandable fillable primer, so the good thing about it is you can sand it. We're going to use a 400 to smooth out any other lines that might be present, and this gets it pretty darn smooth. It also lets us see any of the like fine imperfections we might need to fill, and we're going to be working on filling in the next stage. And again, I'm just going through doing an entire helmet and then I'm going in because sometimes filler primer since it's so thick it will gum up some of the details so you go through with your file to get those fine lines all cleared up you can see it just sort of popping primer out of the cracks and crevices now here are some thicker lines that the filler primer isn't going to take care of uh, this is just you know print artifacting it's going to happen so to fill this, we're just going to use this Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. Now this isn't like full-on Bondo because this doesn't really need it. The, the lines aren't that thick that we need to fill like huge cracks or help bind things together. This stuff is used for just sort of, like it says, it's Spot Putty. It isn't for huge areas. It's just for little spots, little areas that need a little bit of extra filling. And I'm wearing gloves, of course. And sometimes I use these little uh, tools. These are like clay tools tools, clay shaping tools, and I love using those things. Again, links below. I also use pieces of foam. I just cut up foam. This way it helps me spread it. And I'm just going over now that middle of the helmet where we had those larger cracks and the top here. And I'm kind of giving it a little bit more. You want to put the stuff on thin though because it would crack if you go too thick with it. But I know that this is a big area. Same thing in this visor area that had you know, some thicker lines. We can see them here. Uh, I sanded them down as much as possible, but I also knew I was going to be doing some filling. And you can see how this stuff just goes ahead and smooths that stuff over, and they're gone. And there we go. I didn't have to put too much, because again, this helmet came out really, really well with A, how it was printed first, and then the sanding job we did to it. And now we're going to just hit it one more time with some 400 grit sandpaper, and this will even out all of the um, glazing putty we put on there. And you can see this stuff is a fine, fine dust. So please remember to wear your mask because unless you're outside, and even if you are outside, I would wear a mask for this because this stuff is like powder. It is that thin and you don't want to get that in your lungs. So make sure you are wearing a mask. Now here we go, but again, that fine powder needs to come off, so I'm taking it to the utility sink and washing it off with soap and water. And here we go, our last thing of primer, we're just going ahead and giving it one quick coat of primer. I find that if you try to paint sometimes right over Bondo or glazing putty, it do, the paint just doesn't like it. So I make sure I give it one more coat of this two-in-one primer to help fill in any of the gaps I missed maybe when I was sanding the putty and just really make sure we're filling everything in. Then we hit it one more time with a 400 going over all of the helmet one more time. And then we're gonna take some files to it again because, you know, sanding fillable putty, it will get in there and we don't want things gummed up. We want all that great detail to show. Then once we've done this, it's totally dusty and sandy. So we have to wash it in the sink one more time and then we're ready to go. All right, so here it is. Lots of hard work. This is after the final wash. It doesn't have any of the grit, any of the you know, dust from the sanding. As you can see, I am wearing gloves and that was from some comments in some of my other finishing videos where I'm handling the print in my bare hands. And uh, the reason that you don't wanna do that is because oils and dirt can be transferred from your fingers and your hands to the helmet and that oil could uh, interact with the paint that are on your hands. So from now on, before I uh, go ahead and give this thing its final coat, I will be using gloves to make sure I don't screw up that final paint job because that's something you really don't want to do after all that work. So again, super happy with how this turned out. I cannot wait. Next video, we're going to be working on doing the final paint. Now, I haven't landed on a style yet. I'm kind of in between two and I'm doing some tests 
to see which one I want to go with. And that will be in the next video too. I'll show you the tests I did uh, because, you know, we put a lot of work into this helmet. So I keep failed prints around so that I can do paint tests on them. And that's what I do in the next video. There'll be a paint test to decide where I want to go with this. And then we'll be working on doing the final paint for this helmet. And of course, the horns. <laughs> so if you like this video, please click like, subscribe. If you want to know when the other one comes out right away, hit that little bell. And this way you will know. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.